Big highlight of the week this week, Senator, obviously the State of the State address from the governor on Wednesday. Yes, was glad to hear governor's priorities for this next legislative session as well as this next year. When he does the State of the State, not only does he talk about legislative priorities, but he also issues the budget and his budget recommendations. So right now, what we will do, we will take the governor's budget recommendations. We will have hearings on them in both the House and the Senate and come up with our own legislative budget. Some of the highlights, though, of the governor's budget were concerning workforce and education. Once again, fully funded the K-12 foundation formula. We expanded career-ready curriculum to all 57 existing career centers across the state. We increased the A-plus scholarships by $13 million, and we consolidated childhood programs that are currently scattered across three state agencies into a single office, the Office of Childhood. Some of the other things that the governor recommended that we are considering deal with infrastructure. The governor recommended $6.3 million for shovel-ready projects at Missouri Ports, $25 million to fulfill the state local 50-50 cost share program created in 2019, $5 million to continue to expand and improve rural broadband access. This is very important, especially in my district, which includes eight rural counties. We definitely need more access to rural broadband and high-speed internet access. We have many families that not only are buying goods on the internet, but selling goods on the internet, as well as a lot of school-age children that need access to the internet, either for school or doing research projects after school. The governor also included infrastructure improvements at 22 state parks and a one-time expenditure of $100 million to clear the backlog of deferred maintenance at state facilities. As far as health care goes, some of the governor's recommendations included $20 million to establish six new crisis stabilization centers across Missouri, and that also would include 50 new community mental health and substance abuse disorder advocates. As far as government reform, the governor also talked about some agency consolidations and reorganizations and modernizing the foster care and adoption system, which I think is very important to the state. Overall, I agreed with a lot of the governor's recommendations. I look forward to hearing more in detail about some of these programs that he's proposed and some of these funding priorities that he has. Also in the terms of workforce development, one of the, the first actually bill to pass through the Missouri Senate happens on this week, and that's Senate Bill 2. Yes, I was happy to support Senate Bill 2 to help attract and support military jobs in the state. Basically, Senate Bill 2 modifies Missouri's economic development incentives to include both full and part-time jobs created by qualified defense-related projects. If enacted into law, and obviously this passed the Senate and heads to the House for their consideration before the governor would weigh in on it, but Senate Bill 2 would immediately support new job growth surrounding the Missouri Air National Guard's 139th Airlift Wing in St. Joseph, Missouri. Obviously, I have Whiteman Air Force Base in my district, and I fully support our airlift wing in St. Joseph, as well as other military installations across the state, including Fort Leonard Wood.